Yo, what is popping, guys? We are back on Pokemon Showdown today for my draft recap for MPL Season 4, and I'm super hyped for that because I, uh, I drafted a pretty, pretty flame squad. So, uh, yeah, I'm really hyped to show you what, I, what I'm gonna cook up this season or which mods I'm gonna use to hopefully win a championship again. Um, last season was pretty, pretty frustrating. I started off like really badly with like one win in five games. And then I went on a nice like six and one run to um, make the playoffs as I always do basically and yeah my season got cut short in uh, in the playoffs because I missed two leech seeds and uh, which forced me to bank on a roll versus um, the last Mondrapion in front of me and I didn't get the roll had I gotten off a leech seed early on that thing I would have guaranteed killed it. But what can you do? Like that's the game, and yeah, I didn't win the chip because of that. So, <laughs> or I didn't advance to the playoffs. I wouldn't. Obviously, I don't know if I would have won the chip, but it's definitely possible. Like I had a pretty cool squad around Mega Zardex and Azumarill and Weavile and shit like that. So it was pretty pretty powerful. But yeah, this season we have like we drafted some ones that I already had last season, but a bit like a super fun team. Um. I had the 10th pick in draft, I think. Um, oh, yeah, also, by the way, there will be a draft stream um, at some point, I think, on June 11th on my boy Davian's um, Twitch that you all should check out so you can see all the teams. But, um, yeah, I'm going to show you my, my draft already because I'm I'm hype. And this league, uh, this season, the league doesn't require uploads anymore, but I definitely will upload my games because, yeah, because I enjoy it and because I think I can, like, really have some really solid battles that will definitely be fun to watch. So, I had the 10th pick in the draft, uh, which isn't the best spot out of 16 guys, but I felt like the number one mon that I wanted to draft and that I wanted to try out for a long time uh, would fall to me, and thankfully it did. So, um, <laughs> that's kind of hype, and I got my number one mon on the board. Obviously, I didn't get, didn't even consider getting stuff like Tapu Lele or Magiena because they would definitely go in the top five. I was pretty... <laughs> pretty sure about that so I was thinking yeah let me get let me get Manaphy here so Manaphy is the first one I got on, on the squad uh, I wanted to use this thing uh, for a long long time and it's like a pretty pretty interesting one like it always does well in the format but um, it's like pretty um, like it's not as versatile as I like my mons um, definitely everybody knows the tales of set that just like um, functions as a terrific wall breaker and can potentially sweep late game if like, you get rid of faster, for example, electric types or wa uh, grass types that can always check uh, mana fee. But um, yeah, if you get rid of them, like mana fee is like a really big threat. Obviously, stuff like Chansey and, and should um, still walls it, but um, mana fee can like break through everything that like <laughs> break through everything it wants with a plus six. Uh, plastic surf or something if you like really want to like if you really get the chance to set up on some passive stuff and then be like a very big threat it's also one of my z move users um this is we added like uh one of the tier one to three mods can use only attacking z moves and one of our lower, lower tier moves uh, tier mods can use every kind of z move besides um omni boosting z moves for example like z happy hour so i decided to make mana fee my um my z move user in the tier one spot um, because with the Waterium Z, for example, it's like I ran some cards and this allows me to um, get some very, very crucial O or two hit kills in my division that I otherwise would get. So I felt like I felt like this would uh, this would be um, the best choice of mods to like put the Z, Z move on. So I don't think my other mods are as good with the uh, with the, with the Z crystal. So I decided to put it on Manaphy. Um, Manaphy is also kind of nice in the fact that it has a terrific defensive typing in water. Um, doesn't really get hit by too much and um, check some check some nice offensive threats with this overall build. Uh, obviously, 100 base overall is pretty nice. Like a very fat HP set that allows me to set up sub substitutes on some more passive um, mons and I can go from there. Um, it also has a very, very potent um, stall mon, basically, if you want to run the... Um, Rest set with tail, uh, not tail, with toxic skulls or surf and rain dance. Like 
Reno always can heal up and wake up after after one turn already. Um, it's pretty could can be pretty hard to break in the right uh, circumstances and can basically even beat stuff like Blissey or Cresselia that can always moonlight up or stuff that can heal by the cost. Um, Manaphy like is super tough to wear down if you run like a rest set, and then like with the rain boosted scars or the toxic, it can always like stall out um, opponents by like just burning them or toxicing them, and then like um, PP stall the heal bells, go for toxic again and again, and then like <laughs> go from there. So it's like it can be a very annoying one to deal with, and definitely a mon that people will over prep for, which is always nice to have. Like if you know um, your opponent has to bring certain mods in order to check mana fee. It makes prep much easier. It like, just allows you to uh, build a certain way, which is super nice. And also mana fee um, is a terrific wall breaker that will help my second round pick um, to potentially sweep in the late game. Um, when I headed into the draft, I contemplated going with the first three picks of mana fee, guard shop and mega scissor. But um, guard shop was sniped one pick before me and I was like, yeah, I kind of don't want to draft the same Mon again um, as I did last season, but I felt like I have unfinished business with it, with this Mon. I proved last season I can use this Mon very, very well, and I wanted to give it another shot to win a title because I haven't seen anyone like use this Mon super well in the format. I haven't seen anyone win a, win a title with it. So I decided to bring back my boy Vega here, Mega Charizard X. Um, Definitely a fantastic check to the grass and electric uh, types that threaten mana fee and it just appreciates the wall breaking cap capabilities of um, of mana fee to just sweep like and like everything Zart has trouble beating, for example like bulky waters, um, rock types, bulky ground types, mana fee breaks easily for him. So um, will definitely be fun to abuse like the um, Dragon Dance set after I like Broke through my well, he broke through my opponent's squad with the Kalyor Manaphy, for example. Um, that, as I said, gives me a fantastic check to electric types as well as grass types. It um, checks fire types terrifically, so um, Manaphy does that also, but um, Zadex can help doing that because I will definitely have a um, heat grass type on my squad that will appreciate that. Um, it's just like a very, very dangerous sweeper, um, just Zadex. With the um, tough close ability, just hits insanely hard with uh, the flare blitz or the outrage or the dragon claw. Um, at plus one, like it's really hard to stop. Obviously, the speed here isn't as great, but that like knowing that my opponent has to potentially bring a scarfer above base 100 speed makes prep also easier because he kind of has to bring something to stop a plus one Zara X. And like Manaphy and Zard basically make prep for me, uh, like make prep. Um, for my opponents much harder and make makes it much easier for me to prep because I know that well, I know I know what kind of uh, mons on my opponents what will check or counter Zadex and Manaphy and I can go from there. Like I can if I know that my opponent has to bring two or three mons just in order to um, stop two mons that I potentially will bring to almost every game. It just makes makes it so much easier to prep and like I can easily counter team uh, counter counter team that. So that's kind of hard. Um, Zardex has great, great overall stats. Like the Spadaf is a little, little bad. I, I wish they like <laughs> changed the special attack and Spadaf set. <laughs> but um, besides that, it looks, looks pretty sick. Like it doesn't really need that much, much Spadaf. Um, besides maybe living some, um, some Draco meteors or something, like from, from Scar, from weaker Scarfers, um, like potentially Ladias. But uh, besides that, it doesn't really need the Spadaf because it. Um, resist, for example, electric type types uh, pretty easily. Um, grass attacks that are usually special will do a shit on, <laughs> will do a shit, will do shit to Charizard, not a shit on my bad. And yeah, it will just like be a very, very capable wall. Um, I, I showed that I can use it very well defensively last season. I ran a lot of, um, roost sets, a lot of will o wisp sets, uh, or bulky, bulky setup variants with, um, for example, even sword stands. And I used that, those fairly well. Um, Zadex is like really versatile in that regard. It's a great move pool. I ran Brick Break, for example, <laughs> at one point last season because Brick Break plus Dragon Claw actually covered every every single mon on my opponent's squad. So it kind of like it has some like nice moves um, up his sleeve, but obviously Zadex most of the time will run like just dual step and potentially Earthquake um, in order to like beat some mons on on your opponent's squad because that's basically all the coverage it needs um, unless you 
face potentially a fairy or something like the MC that you want to hit with the iron tail over the earthquake to guarantee it one a tear or something but mm, besides that it's, you don't really you don't really um need more coverage than fire and dragon i think so yeah that's what, like my, my first two picks and obviously i once I picked Zart, I knew that I needed very solid hazard removal. Um, last season, I started with Skarmory and Fortress, but then dropped Skarmory um, in week two, I think, because it wasn't just wasn't my type of mon. Was too passive, didn't like do as much, didn't give me even initiative like Fortress does. So I tried to get this time definitely get a defogger because um, I got kind of fucked by screens in in the um, in the playoffs that like really really. Um, Hurt my team so defog this this season is like I felt it was um, once I got Zard I felt like it was definitely necessary to draft a solid defogger and I decided to pick up um, arguably the best tier two defogger in the in the business and that's Togekiss. Um, Togekiss also gives me a nice fairy type. Um, it has terrific overall build with the 85, 95, 115. Um, has solid speed and 80. Has hits incredibly hard even without investment, which is always nice to have. You can run both the variants, potentially even with nasty slots to like really stall break or wall break some stuff. Um, it almost always gets a defog off. It can thunder wave stuff to cripple, cripple it so that um, Zard or Manaphy cannot speed um, my girl L driver. You can obviously run the thunder wave slash set, which is always a scumbag move to do. But um, if it gives me like a chance to win the game, I will definitely go for that. Um, thunder wave in general will, will just be like super helpful for um, Zard and Manaphy because once they like once I slow down um, the checks of counters they can easily sweep or um, do what they do best in Manaphy's case um, just wall break and maybe get one or two kills or like just cripple down stuff so yeah that would be nice um, also has like nice wish passing support and heal build support um, my girl I'll drive a driver that will definitely help like uh, man if we stay healthy with potential wish wish passing um will like potentially get rid of toxics or paras that want to wear down or cripple my zardex and yeah it will just be like a very very solid support i see myself running defog roost maybe thunder wave a lot of the time and potentially like even heal the or stuff like that so that's gonna be high but i can also run like scarf set spec set um offensive set with like a life orb or something life of three attacks is in my opinion a very viable set on Togekiss because it gets insane coverage with like air slash dazzling beam, fire blast basically hits everything you need. It also has aura sphere if you don't want to rely on fire blast to its blue type. So yeah, definitely gonna be a solid, solid mon to use. Um, the speed is nice. I last season I hated my speed hit. Like I had Weaver as my fastest mon, and I had um, Zardex with 100, and then I had a bunch of slow mons that like a lot my opponents to run a lot of stuff um, between like base 100 and base 60, like. Adamant or modest, which like really help them wear wear down my defense front. This season I was much better speed that I will definitely um, have fun with to abuse. So <laughs> that's gonna be fun. So sorry to see my defogger, and then I wanted like a lot of stuff in round four, but I was like I was sniped. I wanted Mammoth Swine really badly. Um, probably should have like done uh, probably should have drafted Mammoth Swine in round three, and then hope for Tokus to fall. But um, I tried to like build safely around Mega Zard, and so I decided to bring back um, my go-to rapid spinner last, and that is Fortress. Um, a lot of people don't like Fortress in the format, I feel, um, because you know what it does, and all it does is basically set up stuff and get off rapid spins, maybe maybe set up spikes, hit something with Gyrobone, then like Volt Swift out or something, and they had basically ran Gyrobone, Volt Switch, uh, rapid spin, and then either Stealth, Rock, or Spike, or maybe maybe like Earthquake or something or Toxic on it most of the time. Like I, one time I ran an Assault Vest variant, but that basically was it. <laughs> and yeah, besides that, Fortress always does the same thing, but that isn't as bad when you have like a bunch of um, versatile mons like um, Zardex and Togekiss already. And you just like basically need, if you bring Zardex, you basically need something that can get um, a lot of spins off in the game very reliably. Um, Fortress is a mon that can spin four or five times a game if you bring it in on the correct mons. Like it checks so many physical threats just by its insane defense that um, it can like spin on basically everything that's not a fire type, which is super nice. It can take most uh, uh, most hidden power fires 
if you invest in Spadev and with the high um, defense that you don't really need to invest in defense as often as you like maybe like as you as, as your thing <laughs> I'd say um, has a decent attack set like nothing special but it helps it not be um, set up for that for most stuff uh, with the gyro ball it hits pretty hard so that isn't even a problem with Fortress like you know what it does but it scares out some stuff like fairies that you don't run HP fire it can get off stealth rock it can get up spikes um, you can volt switch out for the slow momentum which is always nice if you want to bring like Manaphy or Mega's Charizard X in healthy <laughs> so yeah that's pretty helpful like I, I really like Fortress in the format especially like um, with the ZX here like that that is a mon that like just needs the reliable hazard control and like Fortress can get up rocks like four or five times again can spin away rocks a couple times a game so that like basically is exactly the mon um, I need on the squad might be a reach at, uh, in round four but I felt like the next months I wanted um, would fall to round five and six respectively so um, I felt like going with the safest pick possible here was a nice decision. Um, next up I wanted this one for quite a while. I really hoped that <laughs> the NPL would make this mon a tier two pick but they didn't sadly so I had to spend 180 points for my next pick but it was a mon that I always wanted to use and it will give me a nice speed here as well. Mm. Right now I have the uh, Fairy Dragon's Fluke already done. I have two thirds of my water uh, fire grass card, so I decided to get my grass type this round. This is my girl Yo Yubari here. Um, shout outs to Quentin Tarantino. And that's Superior. Um, I really think this is a very underrated mon in the format. Um, I have never used it obviously, but this thing is like such a pain to deal with. Like it has insane speed, like 113 is godly in the tier. Uh, not in the, in the format, like 113 is super nice, outspeed so many threats. Um, is definitely one of the fastest mods that were even drafted, like definitely one of the fastest tier 1 mods, uh, which is always nice. And it has like this nice contrary relief storm, which is so cool to have. It also has, um, like, can also use um, Z Memento, which has been used, um, that, or that has been drafted a lot, like a lot of guys drafted um, lower rounds. A lower tier ghost types that can potentially z memento and with contrary i can like potentially stop that and block that and get a get a nice boost when they try to um, z memento out to get a to get a sweeper in and then like then they are fucked that i can hit them already with a plus to leave storm or coverage move um to be honest like it doesn't get the best coverage overall it gets dragon pulled um obviously grass that knockoff is, is nice to have but more of a more of a gimmick I'd, I'd say but it um, doesn't really need it like most of the time leaf storm plus hidden power fire is enough to um hit everything on our opponent's squad unless it like unless my opponent runs a bulky dragon to like stop superior but then again like superior easily goes to plus four plus six and uh in two or three turns obviously so a plus six leaf storm even in a resisted hit does quite a fuck ton to um everything that wants to switch in um, yes, 75 special attack isn't that great, but if you invest correctly and get a plus too easily, it like doesn't really matter <laughs> because then like once you boost it, it gets like really out of hand. And leaf storm is fairly fairly strong. What does it have? Like 130 stat, um, hits on the special side, which is always nice. Like it's super hard to switch. I always struggle prepping for this mod, especially if you, uh, if my opponent runs like a sub uh, sub leech seed set or a taunt set to really shut down walls that can potentially wall it. Um, it like it can just be a, a nuisance to deal with. It also has very nice overall book with 75, 95, 95. So it gives me a solid check to ground types that I didn't really have at this point. Um, obviously, Togekiss can come in on earthquakes. Um, Marcellus here, my boy Fortress, always uh, takes a hit, but this um. Sapira so basically checks every every ground type there is besides obviously um, Landorus T with the supersonic sky strike. But besides that, it can do quite some damage to like every ground type. It doesn't um, take a lot of damage from earthquakes, so that's kind of lit. I'm definitely gonna use the um, use Sapira um, a couple times this season. Um, I hope hopefully I can pull off some nice leech seed substitute sets that can like just annoy the fuck out of my opponent. But um, the nice leaf storm will come in quite handy to potentially get a nice late game sweep with the surf, unless I miss the leaf storm obviously. So yeah, really hard to use this mon and really hyped to have some speed on the squad. And 
Sub is like just like Manaphy, another wall break wall breaker would be like nice leaf storm that can potentially um pave the way for Zada X suite. Um next up I really contemplated if I should go with this pick, but I felt like I wanted some some nice like some more small speed on my squad. I wanted a spiker, I wanted um a monarch can use an art, a nice pivot, I wanted something that can hit really, really hard. I wanted a dark type and like I needed another tier three mon, so I decided you know what? I get I get this bad boy here, like nice green ninja. Obviously, torrent in this league. <laughs> um, I can't run protein or anything. Um, this mod is like I had to face it two two times last season. And it was a nuisance to deal with. Yes, I had stuff like Among Us, but um, Among Us can't really take it on unless you run AV, and then like Among Us was kind of trash. Um, I hate Grin uh, Azumarill, but Azumarill gets hit by a gang shot, obviously. And green ninja just gives me like another mod that is. Super super speedy. Uh, 122 is absolutely insane. It has great um, special attack, uh, uh, not great, but very solid special attack and attack. Um, uh, put a life up on it, and it can really like two hit KO a lot of the threats in the format. It has spikes and taunt, which is always nice to have. Um, it gets a terrific move pull in dark pulse, ice beam, extra sensory, grass nod, gun shot, um, low kick, power punch if you want to go that route. Nice. Um, nice um, priority and quick attack shadow sneak and water shuriken which is all nice so it gets you and also gets toxic spikes um like yeah what what else do you want on a mod like it has perfect coverage for almost everything especially when you like also add a nice hidden power on there um basically has no guaranteed switches because like you always have to scout for coverage on this mod um and like make sure that you aren't like that you know, that I don't predict you with like a gang shot if you want to go into a fairy on a dark boss or something like that. Like it can really really annoying to um it can be really annoying to switch into that mod. I um figured that out last season when I had to face it twice. So I'm hyped that it is that this mod is on the squad this season. Um Greninja definitely will come to a lot of games I feel like I think Greninja always has a solid matchup, even like if you can't O code stuff with like specs dark pulse or something, you can always like set up spikes. Uh, which is which come really handy for mana fee and Zadex, obviously. Um, you can always use an art for momentum because it forces out so many threats. Um, obviously, it can can't take a hit. Basically, would be terrible both, but I don't really need Greninja to take it. I need it for initiative, for spikes, for fast taunt, for um, some nice coverage that can help me like um, break down wall cores and yeah, that's that's exactly what Greninja will do. Um, I feel like this this pick was a very very good value pick in round six. And the that gives me like more versatility, even though I double up on water types. I don't feel like that's a problem. Um, gives me like nice long options with the hazards, with like super hard hitting attacks like the Specs Hydro or Specs Dark Pulse, which is really tough to switch in. Mm. Yeah, and like just like will be will be a very important member on the squad. I feel. Um, I love me some fast spikers. Every, everyone who um, knows some earlier leagues of mine on has seen some earlier battles on my channel knew that I uh, knows that I you love to use Excel early in the in the day and really like like to threaten my opponents with fast spikes. Um last season I didn't set up a single layer of spikes I think uh, which was super annoying I, I um like hate running only stealth rock as my as my hazards. I wanna pressure my pressure my opponents with um toxic spikes and spike support so this this time I already have two spikers, two T spikes Two T spikers on my team. I have a rapid spin, so I don't um, don't get away my own uh, hazards on my pawn side. So that's gonna be nice. Like some nice hazard stacking definitely coming this season. Next up, I wanted another rocker. I wanted a ground type to check um, electric types, and wanted another fairy check because um, fortress doesn't really do it that well because it like, just gets bobbed by an HP fire or two. So um, I looked around and I had a two big uh, two tier two, and I thought. Like how the fuck is this mod still around? Um, its sister got picked in like round three, and my boy Nido King here fell to round seven for whatever reason, and I'm super hyped to use this mod. Um, to be fair, I really would have liked Nido Queen over it because Nido Queen like just gives me a little bit more bulk and like more reliable stealth rock setter, but Nido King like the damage output Nido King offers in contrast to uh, Nido Queen is like super big like even though like middle queen has only slightly less special attack and attack 
Um, the damage output would be live op and the force boost is really, really crazy. Um, Little King can 2k on Oko stuff, a, uh, or a lot of stuff that Little Queen can't. So I'm definitely hyped to use that. And like with the higher attack and special attacks that you can run mixed sets more often, you can abuse Sucker Punch um, that Nidoking Nido King gets there. And like that's also pretty nice. It gives me like a little bit of faster threat. Like Nido Queen is a little bit a little bit slower than um Nido King and like I can get up stealth rock, maybe more reliably even, because like I can outspeed some stuff that otherwise would threaten, for example, Nido Queen. Um Nido King though can also like always be run defensively. Like it's a solid check to fairy types with the poison sighting. Always check any variant of electric types unless it's like unless they hit me with like a specs HPIs or something. And it also checks like fighting types. So, you know, if you go like with a nice defense investment, you can always always take an, a, a jump kick from a from a certain threat or something. You can always help me check check some threats. Like fighting types obviously everyone knows they are pretty dangerous in the in this format so you always gotta like have one or two checks to those and with Nido King uh, Nido King and Soul Kiss around I feel like I'm very much prepped for um for those kind of uh of mods. Like the um Nido King also has like this fantastic move pool here. Everyone knows that like it has elemental punches, elemental beams or blasts or flamethrower for example. Um Mega Horn Poison Zap for Fairy Slugs with Earth Power. Dual step is enough most of the time. It hits incredibly hard. Um, Shadow Ball, Sucker Punch, Super Fang, a fast taunter again. Um, two spikes of the Stealth Rock. Like this thing, like gets it all. It has like, one of the best move pools in the entire game, and it can really abuse its um, ability. Like it, it um, use its ability better than a lot of other teams, uh, other mods. So that's really really hype, I think. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, that's my first seven picks, and like, right now it's like, Manaphy, ZX, Total Kills, Fortress, Superior, Renina, and Middle Kings. I don't have, like, a lot of bulk on my team, even though, like, Zard will be run defensively very often. Manaphy can always take one or two hits. Um, Total Kills is a very nice defensive mod, but I don't really have a mod that can, like, check a bunch of threats, especially on the special side. Um, I have Mega Gardevoir in my division, spoilers, <laughs> which is also annoying as fuck, and I don't really have a switch into that yet, so I, I looked down in tier 4 and I, th I saw, oh, there's a nice steel type around, a nice reliable stealth rock setter, a nice fairy check, a big special wall, a nice physical wall, and this is my boy Registeel here. Um, usually I'm not a fan of, of this one, um, it's kind of passive with the special attack and attack stats. But I feel like I can make it work that it doesn't become set up for that. Um, can always like, like obviously run stuff like Thunder Wave or Toxic, and I can always run coverage to make sure to make sure um, some stuff doesn't um, set up substitutes on me that I can't break. And it's like Red is the best this year to give me a really really solid check to um, fairies and psychic types or like just special threats in general. I also have Roserade in my division, which can. Hit me fairly hard and Registry like just says no to that thing. Um, doesn't like get too killed by a technician HP fire or something if I invest correctly. And yeah, it also has like a very decent move pool. I feel like obviously Stealth Rock is the way to go. And also Thunder Wave and Toxic. I always, I probably will always run some form of, um, some form of status on this, on this thing to like make sure I can like put stuff on the timer or cripple it in order to, for Zart to sweep or something. Um, there's Iron Head, which hits kind of hard. Flash can obviously in the special side. Explosion, um, if you want to go with the suicide lead or something. Um, you can rock polish up with like a potential weakness policy set or something if you want to go with some nice gimmicks. It gets Ice Punch, which, which is always nice to have. Super Power, um, Thunder Punch, Shadow Claw. Like it gets enough coverage to a, po uh, to a point where it doesn't become set up for that. Um, it can also be like a very, very dangerous setup mod, in my opinion. Like. I think that's kind of underrated on Reggie Steel. Um, when I face it, I always prep for, these, um, for the curse set and make sure that I never lose to that thing. Like, curse Reggie with like rest or something and then like two attacks can be super, super annoying to deal with. Like, once you get rid of rid of a fire type or a strong ground type, you know, you're kind of fucked. And if you like get up two curses or something, it can always, Registry can always eat like even super effective hits versus it just because of its insane overall work. Like this mod will not drop in a single hit. Um, if you invest correctly, like not not even like Mega Lop on his high jump kick or something, you will outcode it that thing. I don't even think you need um 
as much investment. So Red Risky League gives me like another reliable rocker, a nice fairy check, um, a nice wall to like always have a safety net um, for some um, for some annoying offensive threats that I um, didn't have until that uh, this point. So yeah, like it's, it's my third stealth rocker last team. I basically ran stealth rock on fortress all the time unless I brought my stupid Rhyperia, which wasn't that great for me. So um, I like having multiple hazard setters this season. Like you can potentially bring three different um, three different sorts of hazards every week and like don't really miss out on coverage because all my mons like hit so hard and get like enough coverage or like the dual steps if for example on Needle King that like hit everything super hard so I can always like justify bringing hazards on my mount which is super nice to have so yeah Regist Regist joins the squad you're obviously going to be shiny with the light blue I think that looks sick as fuck I didn't even know how the shiny looks until I put it on there <laughs> and yeah also this is another mon that can with the clear body ability can potentially block um block Z Memento which is always nice and I think I feel like Z Memento will be um kind of a big part this season like I used the last season with my Coferius and like people decided yeah that's kind of a great strat in order to get a sweeper in so definitely be aware of that so ready skills also a mon that can block that and I doubt I get swept by Z Memento into setup <laughs> that would be kind of lame um next up I decided to get another tier 4 mon and a mon that I haven't used like an ever. I haven't even seen it, seen anybody use it either. Um, I I know um, Pokemon. I, I hear John in the in the um, GBA used it some time ago, like in season four or something. Um, and he used it fairly well. And I was like, I yeah, looked at this th this thing, and it got like a crazy move pool, solid stats, um, great ability, and I decided to pick up Sigilyph. <laughs> This mon I feel is super underrated. I like don't know why people never grabbed it. Like I don't see it ever uh, anywhere. Basically, I've never faced it in a league, which is kind of crazy. But like one of three special attacks, the life of magic guard hits crazy hard. It has like look at this move pool: ancient power, okay, decent. Um, air slash dark pool, dazzling beam, energy ball, heat wave, ice beam, um, <laughs> psychic side shock, obviously. Um, gets nice roost to hit uh, to like um get HP back. Like, shadow ball, signal beam. Um, there's Toxic, Thunder Wave, Tailwind, um, Whirlwind to face stuff out. Um, it's like, Future Side can always be nice to use. Um, if your opponent doesn't have a, doesn't have a Dark type, it's, it has Miracle Eye, um, Icy Wind to slow stuff down. Obviously, Ice Cream is the superior option. Safeguard, Rain Dance, um, I think it also gets Sunny Day, does it? Um, oh no, it doesn't seem so. But, um, like, it just gets so many different options. It's Trick Room if I want to set that up for something. Nice hypnosis if I want to gamble a little bit on the on the accuracy. Uh, like the move for this thing gets is absolutely crazy. Um, Magic got life up is in my opinion the way to go because um, if you don't put a life up or like any boosting item on it, it doesn't get like the crucial to a chaos that it gets with a um, life up. It doesn't like hit as hard as it as it could, but um, with a life orb, like it's absolutely fucked shit up. Like it gets so it hits so hard with psychic. Like you, you don't want to switch in on this thing if you don't have like a fat um, steel type, and then you get bopped by a heat whip. Uh, that could be annoying. Mm. With the magic guard, it also gives me a nice safety net if I run like focus sash magic guard. I can always come in on a on a setup mod that is already that uh, that got out of hand, and with the focus sash, I can potentially lift it and thunder with it or um. Like just Oko it from a range. I just have to put in range for single lift and then like lift guaranteed on the focus set with the magic guard and then like kill it. Um, which is always a nice safety. Also the um cycle shift flame offset can be super annoying for some physical threats. Um I feel like that can be super annoying to deal with. Even though I don't see myself running uh running it too often, that definitely is a possibility. So single lift here, a very, very solid tier form and I'm super hyped to use it. Um, the nice versatile move pull definitely will come in quite handy in some matchups. This should not be male, by the way, it should be female. <laughs> so, I reckon you like, if you're a Tarantino fan, you already know my, all, my t all my nicknames are coming from some um, pretty heat move, uh, movies that are on my top like top 15 all time or something. Like, Tarantino is the man, so my girl already, she be here, definitely will put in the work. Um, so, I had two picks left, I had to pick two um, tier 5 mods. 
and I wasn't quite sure which way to go. I didn't really want to go with stuff like Rhydon as another rocker or Regirock or something. Um, it's not like another form of bull, but I found the monad I found really intriguing, not only because it gets Z Memento, <laughs> spoiler, the next one will be my um, lower tier Z move user, but it also has like nice, nice um, support moves that can abuse, especially because it also has Baton Pass. Um, Baton Pass clause is not in effect in this league, so I can potentially um, pass a, smash pa uh, a Shell Smash or something. So um, the next one will come in quite handy in terms of baton passing uh, strategies. And this is my boy Drifling here. Um, looking at this thing, it doesn't really look like anything is threatening. Like 150 base HP is nice, um, but terrible defense steps, obviously. It can take a hit, obviously, because of its crazy high HP step, but it doesn't really hit hard with 90 special attack. Um, 80 attack isn't something to look at. Um, it has a decent ability in Unburden, but it can't um, pass the Unburden speed boost to a, um, to a Mon, like if it, if I go for Baton Pass. But it has some really, really nice options, um, especially after an Unburden. It basically outspeeds everything around, unless it's like this uh, extra drill in the sand. It has, like, it can get off a Baton Pass after setting up a Car Mine, for example. Uh, it can get a fast clear smog off on. Um, or what's it called, on um, setup mods or a haze. I'll uh, get Defog if I really want to go that route. Um, Destiny Bond, Disable, it can do quite a bunch of shenanigans. It's got Knockoff, which is always nice. So it has the Z Memento, Pain Split, um, which isn't like that good on it because it has like such high HP. Uh, Magic Code has pretty bad coverage, but Shadow Ball plus um, Psychic is enough most of the time. It also gets Thunderbolt, which is nice. Thunder Wave Trick, Will O Wisp, Toxic, like. It definitely would be an annoying one to face if I um, if I bring it. And I feel like a lot of people will like under prep for it. And they always will expect um, the Z Memento on the set for me, so that I can get in my Zard for an easy setup. But I definitely think I will like go with some other strats on it. Um, maybe a setup variant with the <laughs> Calm Mind. Maybe like um, a scarf set with Trick or something to cripple walls. Um, Tailwind support can be nice. Um, I don't think like this thing um, will be really bad. It also gets icy wood, which is cool. I didn't know that. But um, can always set up weather for Man of your Zard, like Sunny Day or um, what's it called Rain. That's, rain that's pretty nice. Skill swap shenanigans are always fun. Um, like I could run a flare boost set <laughs> if I want to do that. Like. I could run Flame or Flare Boost with like Trick or something and then like get up a Car Miner and a plus two with the Flare Boost obviously. Um, it hits pretty hard, like Shadow Ball is like nice coverage in general, only like has a, has a like very low amount of resistances obviously and yeah, it will come in quite handy. I see myself running a Baton Pass set at, at some point in the season, so yeah, definitely like more of a meme pick I would say in the in the last last two rounds, but um yeah, it definitely will come to a game or two. I won't bring it like every week. I don't think I will bring it more than three times maybe. But um, if I bring it, I definitely see it putting in work in the right matchup. Um, I like. I think people are gonna sleep on this mod during their prep and then will be yeah fuck um, if I like hit them with a the nice drift limb there. So yeah, that's ten mods on my team. The last one, I really really wanted Licky Licky, but uh, my boy Sebastian um, sniped it. Like a blue victini got of the Montreal Montana. We actually talked about like what we are trying to draft, and he said he wants a licky licky tune. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Um, we don't like we're not sniping each other. We are having a nice metronome battle with a with a random mew um, without investment on short arm. And you know what my mew decided to do? Turn three it went for self destruct after Sebastian got a table or dark pulse off of me that always uh, it almost killed me, which was um, fucked in itself. But my mew decided to self destruct, and I was like, yeah, fuck it. You get you get a nice blob licky licky, but I still wanted the wish passer on my as my last mod because I don't want to run wish on wish on Togetic uh, Togekiss that often because I feel like Roost is better because wish al uh, almost always needs protect um, in order to be effective. So I decided yeah, that's not the way to go. <laughs> and I still want a normal type on my squad and a mod that can abuse potential T spikes and. I decided to go with um, Kangaskhan. Also looks like a meme pick, but it has like very very solid overall book. Can um, pass very fat wishes to stuff like Manaphy. Um, it hits decently hard with the 95 attack, 
Um, has solid speed, which is underrated. I think 90 speed is the speed that I really like to have on my on my squad. And with the like with the stuff like fake out um, and like circle to throw even um, on the on the Kangs can can really abuse T spike setting. Um, potentially wish pass it can like seismic toss stuff. Obviously not as good as the Mega Evolution, but <laughs> yeah, definitely can like do quite a quite a quite a uh, like quite a lot of stuff. Uh, it gets raw to um, phase around stuff that once like it then like gets chip damage off on it with my hazard. Um, it has a terrific move for like looking at Aqua Tail Blizzard. Um, yeah, definitely like a fresh special attack. But if something is quite weak to it, it definitely could work. Um, Kranish Circle Throw disabled Drain Punch Earthquake Facade, which is always nice to have. Um, Fire Punch, Hammer Arm, Ice Punch, Ice Beam, obviously. Um, even gets outraged, but obviously that is, like, I will never run that. Shadow Claw to hit um, Ghost if I don't run Scrappy. Um, Seismic Ghost is nice, Sucker Punch is nice. Um, can pass Wishes, which is really, really cool. And yeah, while it's not like the craziest mon to prep for, it can definitely be super annoying with the fat Wish set that can like just fake out stuff, the chip damage off. Um, can cripple stuff with Thunder Wave or Toxic, and then like. Hits hit pretty hard with the return. Like Bandit Adamant return from Kangaskhan hits crazy hard. Like people under might underestimate that. Um, it's not a nuke like potentially Stoutland or something, but really hits hard if you don't have a resistance. Like with Scrappy, normal spam is just nice to have. A lot of a lot of mons really don't enjoy taking normal type hits because like what are the resistances? Like fighting and uh, not fighting rock and steel. So not a lot of titans they want to come in on that. I can always predict that with the drain punish, for example. So. Kangas can really could potentially put in quite some work. <laughs> um, so yeah, I see myself using this mod fairly often, I would say, because like the overall bulk helps me like check some check some threats in my division that I don't really have the best switch. That's why I already talked about Roserade. If I feel like um Registeel is in the mod to go with um in that matchup I can always go like with a specially defensive Kangas can and check um those type of mods. Which is nice. <laughs> also, Skeeta with Roserade is cool. But, yeah, like, Assault vs. Kangaskhan puts in quite some work. Um, like, both defenses have some merit, even though, like, physically defensive isn't that great, I feel. Um, yeah, Fake Out with, uh, plus Toxic Spikes <laughs> support is always nice. Yeah, and then plus these fat, fat wishes, which I like to have. Like, that's basically all I need <laughs> for Kangaskhan to, to um, shine and to really. Help my like my higher tier mods out. Like wish passing is so nice for for Zard, for Manaphy, for um, Sapiria, for Nido King even if Nido King is my go-to check for fairies and electric types. So Kangaskhan definitely will put in the work. So yeah, 40 minutes in and that is the squad for MPL season four. What about Manaphy, Zardex, Solkis, Fortress, Sapiria, Grim Ninja, the God, Nido King, Reggie Steel, um, Sigilith, Drift Blim, and Kangaskhan. Uh, I'm really hyped to use the squad. Um, a lot of guys like in the league said I drafted a really, really good, a really threatening team, and I feel the same. Like I really, really like what I what I drafted there. Um, obviously I got sniped a little. I really wanted stuff like Mammoth Swine on the squad. That's what is nice um, priority. Uh, I don't have like great priority on the team, which um, definitely um, kind of annoying. Like last season I had. Uh, Azu and Weaver that basically um, have like the best priority in the game almost, but I feel like I can work around that um, because of all the speed I have. So yeah, I'm really hyped. I don't know like um, how it will work out, but I'm really confident that I can make playoffs again. Um, I don't feel like I have the toughest matchups in my conference, not like from a skill standpoint, but from a from a team matchup point. Like I feel like my squad um, can beat any of those matchups and like. That's always nice if you want to make playoffs. I feel like I can win my confidence, uh, my uh, conference or my division fairly easily. So yeah, I'm just gonna put that out there. But yeah, that's it for my draft recap. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and a comment if you did. Let me know what you think of the squad. Like, let me know what like which mons you don't like. What like kind of lower tier mons you might have picked to support like Zard and Manaphy to shine. And yeah, like just let me know in the comments and. Catch you. Oh wait, by the way, um, week one starts on June 19th, so the first upload will be like June 26th on my channel. So be hyped for that, and yeah, enjoy the the rest of like the upcoming vids that I'm gonna hit you with. So catch you then.